Hello, everyone. Guillaume Lesvan here, host of the E-Commerce Wizards podcast, where I feature leaders in e-commerce and business. If you're an e-commerce store owner, or if you're involved in the finances of an e-commerce store, this episode is for you. Today's guest, Matt, is a CFO, a chief financial officer specialized in e-commerce. So he has all kinds of techniques, optimization tricks that he can teach you to improve the company's finance, make the entrepreneur more wealthy, more successful, just make situation more pleasant to be in by optimizing cash flow, cash conversion cycles, by improving how we structure financial deals and so on. This is a very interesting episode if you're in the finance or entrepreneurship space for an e-commerce store. Today's guest is Matt Putra. He's here for a second episode together today. He's the founder of the company 8X. He's a fractional CFO, chief financial officer, and an expert in e-commerce. So that's his area of expertise. You have a full intro about him in the first episode. So this second one here will be somewhat short. It's about cash management for e-commerce store owners, merchant, uh, more specifically, a method to shorten the cash conversion cycle, sometimes called CCC. So Matt, thanks for being here again. You're welcome. It's great to be here. All right, let's jump right into the topic. How do we shorten the cash conversion cycle? And, and what's oh, that in the first place? And why should you care as a merchant? Got it. So cash conversion cycle is a measure of how long it takes from the time you pay for inventory to the time you collect cash from your customers. Um, you there, there's a, It's a complex calculation, but very simply, if you think about it in this way, I pay for, um, uh, I pay for my inventory in month zero, I sell it in month two, and I collect the money in month three. So then you have a 90-day cash conversion cycle, basically. Now, shortening it is unbelievably important, and it's really, really effective. I looked at the cash conversion cycle for somebody who was doing about seven or eight million dollars a year in sales? Shortening the cycle by two days created an additional two hundred thousand in cash at the end of the year that we were forecasting for. So it is very effective to keep to put attention against this uh, metric. And here are some ways to shorten the cycle. So when you think of look, paying for stuff, selling, collecting it. Well, what can you do? Well, push those timelines together. So when you order your PO from let's say China. One of the things I did with one of the companies that I own is I emailed my Chinese supplier and I said, hey, instead of 30% deposit, can I have 25? They said, yeah, of course, no problem. It's a very, very small ask, but a number of small asks will add up to those two days and 200 grand. So I asked him, hey, 25%. He said, yeah, no problem. I went to another supplier and I said, if I pay you an extra 1%, can I have 60 day payment terms? He's like, and this, these people were like, yeah, no problem. And I spent 500 grand a year with them but I got a whole 30 days. So now what's happening is I'm buying the stuff and I'm starting to sell it before I pay them. Um, other things you can do is um, obviously you can reduce the cost of your inventory. Can you negotiate even 5%? Small, small ask. Uh, somebody, a good, very good friend of mine and business partner, his name is Kevin Shentag. He has this, what he says is you take nibbles. He's coined this phrase, at least as far as I know, in nibbles. You ask for very small things at regular occurrences, and they add up to a very important number, which is in this case of my other client, 200K. So Kevin says, take nibbles. So don't ask for, uh, can I have 20% off on your inventory? No. Can I have, can we do 5%, right? And three months later, hey, can we do another 5%? And if you continue to buy with them, typically those asks are manageable. Instead, maybe instead of 5%, you say, look, I'll pay you an extra 1% for 30 day terms. Sometimes they bite on those things, right? So small, small, small nibbles will add up. Um, on the collecting from customer side, well, can you do pre-orders? Can you do partial pre-orders? Can you do deposits? Is there something in your product line where it's often limited or really sought after such that you sell out and you say, look, we have a shipment coming, it's two months, you can reserve your piece by paying 10% now or 20 or the whole thing. Some people it works for the whole thing. And when you do that, now you've brought your payment structure this way and you've bought your collection this way and you've shortened that cash conversion cycle. And like I say, you don't have to ask your customers for 100% upfront, ask for 10, that's a nibble, but it's hugely, hugely effective. Now, I don't know if there's an app that would handle this, the small prepayment. Um, Guillaume, do you know if there's one? 
for small prepayment, uh, not too sure. It just n- not specifically for that. No. Right. So th- there are emerging options like subscriptions. You know, you might ask, you, you might talk to your community and say, hey, uh, for X dollars a month, you can come in our site, reserve pieces that are coming on the boat so that they don't sell it. So you make sure mm-hmm. you get an option. That's an option. But anytime you're collecting money um, faster than normal, even if it's a yeah. little bit of money, and anytime you're paying a little bit later than normal, reduces the cycle. Yeah, we, we just do it through normal accounting and voicing, yeah. or, or if it's for the user interface and a bit of programming that they would have yeah, some kind exactly. of deposit feature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or it could be a subscription, could be membership. Yeah. And then there's obviously reducing the amount of cost of something or increasing the amount of collection. So can you reduce your cost of sold? Can you increase your AOV? Both those things will help. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying take your AOV from 100 to 150. Yeah, average order value. Go, Average, sorry, sorry, average order value. Um, I'm saying take your average order value from 100 to 105. That's yeah. a great place to start. 5% is huge when you look at how many thousands of orders you're going to get in a year. So go through your business. Can you pay just a little bit later? Can you collect just a little bit earlier? Can you pay a little bit less? Can you collect a little bit more? Those kind of four, I don't know if it's quadrants. I just thought of this right now, but those four things small small steps in each of those four things systematic and tracked so make a spreadsheet put the headings for the four things put some ideas and start asking people can this can i do that can i do this can i do this track which ones are working and then repeat the process every couple months review that sheet review the four things and just again take nibbles every three months and you'll be so surprised at the amount of cash left over in your business. Like I say, this one client, two-day change in the cycle was $200,000. Yeah, another thing to keep in mind is if you want to double the, the bottom line, the profits, you don't need to necessarily double the top line because right. you have your costs and all that. So let's That's do a right. simple example, the $1 million business that has a 20% net profit after taxes. So they have mm-hmm. 200,000, but it means to run the whole business, it costs you 800,000. But mm-hmm. once that is that cost is already covered, you know, to double exactly. your profit, maybe all you need is to reach 1.3, 1.4. You know, exactly. you, you just need to, you don't need double if you can increase in the efficiencies a little 100%. bit everywhere. Can you increase the price like 10%, 100%. 12%, 15%? Can you bundle exactly. it, present it differently? So can you add something of value so that you, they're willing to pay 15% more? Can you reduce your cost 15%? Can you improve your cash totally. collection version cycle 15%? So it's so just, like you say, small improvements of about 15% everywhere, you will double the whole business profitability. When you would know about post, uh, post, or I don't know what you call them, but in the cart and then on your way to the checkout, like you have those, I just checked out with Monos Luggage the other day and the, I, I, hit, I hit the button to add to cart and this sidebar popped up and said, hey, by the way, these few things that aren't that expensive really go well with what you're buying. Yeah, Here's cross-selling. what other people like, cross-selling. And then right after I finished the checkout, they said, look, there's another chance. Uh, there's a couple things that, that might make sense. Do you want to do it? And I mean, it was a wonderful flow, but you're probably taught, and you might have some stats on this, but you might be looking at a 10% order bump. It could be more. It depends what you're selling, but it can mm-hmm. be way more than 10%. You can have like all the way 30%. Yeah. If anything from the uh, impulse buy to actually yeah. truly giving value to the customer. Exactly. And if you have something complicated, like some kind of online hardware store, Okay, mm-hmm. what's your project? You want to renovate something in your bathroom? Okay, well, you've only bought the sink. Did you think about the pipes? Do you have the glue for the the, the black pipes? Do you have this? Do you have that? So you can suggest them sort of a, a better combination of the related products that people will typically buy. Yep. And it's almost like giving them a checklist. Like to do that project, this is what you need. Do you already have it at home for DIY exactly. setting or do you need it? And then add the card, add the card, add the card. This episode is brought to you by Mage Montreal. If a business wants a powerful e-commerce online store that will increase their sales or to move piled up inventory to free up cash reserves or to automate business processes to reduce human processing errors, our company, Mage Montreal, can do that. We've been helping e-commerce stores for over a decade. Here's the catch. We're specialized and only work on the Adobe Magento e-commerce platform, also known as Adobe Commerce. We're among only a handful of certified companies in Canada. We do everything Magento related. If you know someone who needs design, support, training, maintenance, or a new e-commerce website, email our team at support at magemontreal.com or go to magemontreal.com. That's M-A-G-E montreal.com. 
you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I can tell that you really understand the customer journey because um, this checkout with Monos was probably the most beautiful checkout experience that I've had in like two years. Um, and what you're saying was exactly what it was like. It was like, look, you're traveling. Here's some stuff that would make your traveling a bit easier. And it was like, it was, they just knew what I needed and what I really wanted. It was awesome. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so it's a mindset your... of truly helping and truly yes. giving value to the person yes. that's trying to just shove them a sale. Yes, you know? exactly. So, yeah, uh... they weren't. Yeah, totally. And, and one more thing I'll add about uh, cash conversion cycle. We talked about uh, pay slower, collect faster, pay less, collect more. The last thing is hold less inventory. When you inventory, stale inventory is a killer. Uh -huh. If you buy stuff that doesn't move, oh, it hurts because it's just these dollar bills sitting on your shelf you'll just sometimes never get back unless you fire sale it or you'll you'll burn half of the stack because you have to get rid of it so um especially this year buy conservatively um selling out is a problem very big problem for amazon less so for shopify so there might be some skews that you would allow yourself to sell out of um or at least sell out of just before the shipment's coming um be very careful with inventory this year we don't know what consumers are going to do. Uh, consumer confidence is is struggling, and so um, you know, if you think about twenty twenty one, it was a great year, but it's not that year. Uh, just buy carefully, and you just don't want to get stuck with bags of money on your shelf that you that you can't move or that you have to throw half the bag in the in the garbage, right? Yeah, th there were a few market vertical that that stayed stuck at the end of the season before the winter. Like, totally. hey, we uh, there's all that summer stuff we haven't sold. Uh, yeah. Unlike previous years, we're stuck with the X millions in, yes. in inventory this year. And then they're like, oh, do yes. we want to fire sell it? But then, you, as you said, it's like a pile of money. You burn half yeah. to get rid of it. Exactly. Have it back. It's like, oh, not sure. Exactly. And then, and then they say, with all the disruption in the supply chain right now, do I even, like, I don't know what will be my cost to resupply Exactly. my store with all that inventory so mm -hmm. some of them say well maybe i'll just sit on it for now and liquidate it more slowly if they can totally. afford to do so because yeah. you know you don't know the future about resupplying in some of the verticals some other is more mm -hmm. safe if, especially if you have like continental inventory resupplying that's not involving yep. too much tech piece totally. uh, and overseas shipping yeah and if if you're in a position where you're stuck with too much inventory uh talk to the marketing team talk to some other experts of what you're gonna like i'm not necessarily a growth and sales expert but can you and without discounting can you give stuff away like your cac for most people is minimum a third of your average order value. or sorry if your customer acquisition costs sorry yeah, i was about to say it <laughs> yeah your customer acquisition cost is is minimum a third of your average order value for most people can you just give stuff away like if you give stuff away let's say you you're, you have a you have a customer that buys from you. You're like, look, here's another thing that you can send to a friend for free, and you have a gift card on it. Well, now you might have a customer that just got a gift for free. You would have paid X dollars to acquire them, but if you send them a free item that's sitting on your shelf, maybe that's a way because they're going to get. Let's say it's a, a shirt, fifty dollar hoodie. I'm going to get a fifty dollar hoodie from my friend, and with with your gift card on it, the hoodie costs you uh, fifteen twenty dollars. But the value to me is 50 bucks. So what's your actual cost of acquisition? Well, that's that's an interesting opportunity for some people. Yeah, yeah the giveaways and bundling. And mm -hmm. if you're a retailer selling the same stuff as everybody else, mm -hmm. uh, there's no branding differentiation there. It's not your totally. own brand label. Uh, sometimes it comes back to how much are you willing to pay to acquire a customer? And that can include adding gifts, exactly. um, yeah. you know, choose your gifts on the checkout kind of, kind totally. of deal so that... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that's why I'm going to buy from from you instead of buying from the other guy. The other guy doesn't give me a gift when I check out. It's the same price, but I, yeah. I buy it from you. I have this those free samples and I have this little thing with it that doesn't cost mm -hmm. you too much. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Okay. Hey, pretty good coverage of the, the cash conversion uh, cycle. Fancy terms, very simple. You spend money to buy anything, inventory services, pay employees. How fast does the money come back in your company? The faster, the better. And it makes a big difference to your financial result and how easy it is to run the business. Because if it's too long, that cash conversion cycle, you're going to feel more strapped in the cash flow monthly. No matter mm -hmm. how many zeros that business has, it is true because it's going to scale with the size you're at. Seven mm -hmm. figure, eight figure, nine figure. Absolutely. If the cash conversion cycle is not good, 
it can totally um, you know create a, a big problem in the cash flow even for the, the large companies. So um, very important concept there to optimize. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. All right, Matt, if uh, somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Yeah, you can check out my website, www.adex.co, E-I-G-H-T-X dot C-O. LinkedIn is a really great place. If you're looking for, for to hear back from me within like a day, man, LinkedIn, find a post, comment, ask a question. I'm happy to chat. I answer lots of questions all the time. Um, and you kind of get, to, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you get to kind of see what I'm about, how I think. Um, and, you know, eventually you might decide, hey, I'm going to ask a question. But that's, those are the best places to find me. All right. Thanks for being here, Matt. Thank you so much, Guillaume. I really appreciate it.